day, gorgeous people. How the heck and flip are we? My name's Theo, and we are back once again with a fresh damn it open. Hoping to uh, wrap up the uh, Hasbro PulseCon swag box that I was bestowed with after hosting the show in September. It was great, I had a lovely time, and there's more of the story to be told today. Very delighted to have the uh, PO box open once again. Box 55, 1 Hamby Street, Nottingham, NG15, BLUK. So if you've got anything you want to show us, send it to this thing, and we'll check it out online, yeah? Brilliant. Oh my god, plenty more bots to look at today. Why don't we tuck in with the delicious metal pumpkin samurai man that is Legacy Evolution Bludgeon? Gosh, this is a weird one. I feel a couple of ways. I know a lot of people were really buzzed for this, but I don't know if I'm quite there, honestly. There were people who were so pumped for Tarn, and wow, it's brilliant! But like, as a toy, it's... It's kind of okay. It doesn't quite strike me in the way it has for a lot of others. So let's see how Bludgeon hits. I do love the thing with Bludgeon's name, where it's like he's the sleekest, most skillful samurai murder man with a sword of all time, and yet he's called Bludgeon, which is just beating somebody up. But it sounds cool, and it sounds violence-oriented. What's a gear here? We've got bringing see-through Halloween candy cannons, big old bread knife on the go, and a, th a fourth thing. How are we, anyway? You'll notice I'm wearing my own merch, my own band and my own hand, could I be tackier? Look, I believe in my band and my music and I like it very much and I hope that you will as well, so what better way to uh, exhibit that than wearing a t-shirt? I'll do it for your band. Ooh, actually, you know what? I think I'm in the process of being won over. That, for me, is kind of kick-ass. Let me get the other one. Yeah, Legacy Bludgeon is one of those toys that's difficult to talk about without the uh, legacy that precedes it. When you're me, anyway. When you've got this whole whole decade plus of collecting history on the go, you can't help but take a toy and compare it to the one that it's succeeding and the one that it is a repaint of. You gotta do it, right? So yeah, this is uh, Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. This is the sort of go-to modern bludgeon update. Modern. It's like 12 years old, but still, this is your uh, bludgeon that ain't from the 80s. And it's still a good-looking thing. It's a little clumsy now. Certainly looks uh, very lumpen and <laughs> more like a guy called bludgeon than the uh, the skillful master over here. This is actually very good. It's a bit of a different vibe. It's not as grounded. Clearly more of a Cybertronian comics vibe on the go. Because the alt mode on this is still stunning. It's like a Japanese war tank. It's amazing. And this turns into like a big lump with some turrets on. I don't know. But it is a very different vibe and I want to love Tarn. It's just, it doesn't quite penetrate for me. It doesn't quite get through the shield of flaws that it has. Like it is good and decent and it looks nice but it's so skinny and the alt mode's kind of nothing but bludgeon just has a lot more energy to it doesn't it it's so much more sort of frisky come on give me that samurai badness bro give me that anime edge give me the sauce that is some pumpkin spice yeah and he's got the whole backpack thing where you can have multiple cannon action so you can do like a double fusion cannon that's so mary sue decepticon move isn't it he's got a fusion cannon like megatron but there's two of them Whoa! I think that was kind of the gag with Tarn, wasn't it? He's so, like, up himself and overcompensating. I notice he's got opening hands, too. That's kind of a nice feature on a Voyager. G-Axis has that as well, I think. Which, love to see it, but it does make it even weirder that uh, VNR Optimus didn't have that. But yeah, Bludgeon has been uh, historically a frustrating one, hasn't it? With this one, it was always, uh, is it movie-verse or is it universe? We don't know. We've never really known. We suspect it was repurposed. Like, it matters, really? I don't know. I'm far less um, compartmentalized with my collecting now. It's like, is there a good Bludgeon? Bludgeon, yes, I will take it. For me, this makes a better sort of chug bludgeon, chugjun, than it does a movieverse toy, right? It doesn't fit in with the other movieverse Decepticons at all. It is quite clever how this works, though. There's a lot of interesting panels and funny angle work on the go. It's this bit, though. This on Tarn felt very weak and kept popping off the little sort of cow catcher thingy. But this does feel a little sturdier. We'll give it a chance. Let it get out of the shadow of all these other things it's <laughs> succeeding. Because the question's always going to be there. Is it better than X, Y, Z? Kind of... Can it not just be a thing on its own? Why shouldn't Bludgeon just be good? Oh, mate, I actually... 
in a rare moment of actually participating in a collab. I um, put in an appearance on a Treebot Reviews video the other day. He reviewed uh, Universe Skywarp, and he's like, can you just check in and give me these two lines? So I said, yes, of course. Because, like, so frequently with collabs, I find myself sort of saying yes and then backing out because I don't have, like, the time or the energy to complete it. So I end up disappointing them and dropping out, and I don't like doing that. But then Treebot pops up and he's like, yo, can you just record two lines for me? I'm like, all right then. <laughs> so please do go and check that out. He's a good lad. It's uh, Treebot Reviews uh, Universe Skywarp. I'll put a thingy in the description and have fun being in it for 10 seconds. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, these knees are very strange. Ah, got it. I got you. <laughs> I've got your number, baby. We have a bludge tank. Bludge tank, baby, bludge tank. Oh, that's very, uh, <laughs> only in Transformers could this be a thing. It's kind of a tank. This is kind of in line with like Skull Grin, isn't it? Because they seem to be doing the uh, revised Pretender thing. This probably is better than Skull Grin. I haven't checked out Bomb Burst yet, and I've got Iguana sat over here in a box still. But for this, it's nice that they haven't tried to um, overcomplicate and include elements of the shell and the tank as well. Because it's like, it's two totally different designs. And I'm glad that they just picked one and went with it. So yeah, that is kind of dope. It's very silly, isn't it? It? Very, uh, lots going on. Lots of components and layers and colors and sort of bits and bobs. They really did it. They made an alt mode that works equally well for bludgeon and tarn and then did it as both of them. I think that's pretty good, man. Don't feel like I need to choose between these. You can do both because they're so different. This is the silly space version and this is... I don't know. This is this one. <laughs> this toy ain't going anywhere. I love this thing. But this also is very valid. A good bludgeon, a good gen. All right, this is going great. That would have been a good Halloween moment, wouldn't it? The, the moment's kind of passed. But a big orange pumpkin monster with a skull face. Perfect Halloween vibes, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's always Halloween in this house, baby. We're goths here. <laughs> I don't know where the sword's supposed to go. I'm just going to bang it on top. Brilliant. Drive me closer. I want to hit them with my sword. Right then, from the Horrifying to the adorable, this is Legacy Evolution Core Class Optimus Prime and Bumblebee Action Set. Oh, this is wonderful. I accidentally skipped both of these. I never got this Bumblebee and I never got the Core Optimus. So uh, a little box set inclusive of trailer. Perfect. That's definitely Motormaster's box art, isn't it? Oh, that's fine. If you can repaint a toy, why not reuse the box art you've already done? Pop this open. I can't wait to check this out, actually. The Core Class has been extremely good. This would have been a good one for Truck over. Oh, so many missed opportunities. <laughs> Look how tiny that is. Oh, babes. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to see this. This has such Dark of the Moon Prime Cyberverse vibes. Oh, it's so small. Hello. Hello, friend. As if the sculpting on that is, oh God, it's like better than Earthrise. Better than Leader Class. Oh, hello. Do we have Roller? No, we have, we have the scrunched up newspaper they put in shoes. Oh, we do have Roller. <laughs> Incredible! Teeny tiny roller. Oh, adorable. Guns and blasters and bits. We've got the little axe. Oh, that is sickening. Look how tiny that is. I can't wait to see how this works. This is actually giving me vibes of um, the hybrid style convoy I tried to review in October, but found incredibly dull. I think this is going for a similar thing, like the whole Optimus experience at a pocket size. But I think where the hybrid style fell down was that it was die cast, so it was still really expensive. This is is a gorgeous, ostensibly budget release. Oh, that's so clever. Clever, boys. Is that right? Is that the whole thing? He's got some skirting. Yes, it, it looks like that is how that works. Look at him. He's so tiny. So perfect. He's everything. He's a pocket-sized powerhouse. Perfect little uh, ion blaster on the go. Got a little port on the wrist for the axe. Ah! Oh, that's so good. I am a little tired of seeing this axe everywhere, but the people want it, don't they? The people love that episode one Energon axe moment, and who am I to be mad about it. Cheeky trailer on the go. We got the, uh, oh Christ, how does this work? <laughs> Can I do this without pulling it to bits? Oh, actually gorgeous. That's really good, actually. Really solid little Medibot. So nice to see this in blue, because the Earthspark one was like gray. VNR one was black. So why hasn't it been blue since 1984? Little repair bay moment. Oh, 
baby, look at this. What else do you want? That is so cute. Let's get roller in there. Isn't that perfect? So small. I mean, I love that the uh, legend scale phenomenon is ongoing. Wonderful to see them embracing this fully with the trailer. Oh, that's interesting. That's why this all comes off. So you can put the repair bot on roller. Ah, brilliant. Little uh, self-contained Star Wars friend. Little gonk droid fella. Can it have a gun? It can have a gun. <laughs> it can hold a gun. Boo, 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 boo. Oh, imagine him rolling in to save the day. I love that. <laughs> See, this is what the Hybrid Star one was missing. Because it's a similar thing. It's the trailer and the guy at this sort of scale. But there's no fun in there, you know? There's no sense of humor with Hybrid Style. It's all so serious and so dry. And instead of a detachable repair bot, it has like six interchangeable hands and different faces. And I don't care about that. Give me the fun stuff, man. This is dynamite. This thing, what is this thing? So that clips on there. Then you can stash the axe up in this corner and the big gun gun and the little gun. There is a third gun, but I think it belongs to Bumblebee, so we'll leave that. There we are, both the guns. Medibot, flip him forward, and then Optimus, where does he go? He like jams on there? I think it's supposed to click into Optimus, but it's not happening. However, he can simply stand there. He's having a little standing up sleep. That's what that is. Battle convoy storage mode. This is such good fun, I love it. Uh, let's check out this Bumblebee, shall we? Clearly based off uh, a different car. Folks are speculating that it's meant to be like Bumper or Bumble Jumper with his big flat front and slightly not Bumblebee-ish proportions. But like, I don't know if it works as Bumper because it has such a Bumblebee face. And I get why they did that. For the layman, who's going to buy Bumper? Because they're just going to think, oh, it's just Bumblebee, isn't it? That would seriously be a just for the fans moment. And I think we're getting enough of those for the time being without getting Bumper back in the mix and confusing every single person who's not a diehard fan. There we are. Look at this. this there's no way that ain't Bumblebee. It's just Bumblebee. And I kind of enjoy the uh, styling on this. It's like, takes it right back to the um, G1 Minibot toy with these very sort of mechanical pump arms and the big wheels. God, is this even core class? I don't know. It's roughly core class, ain't it? Cause like this originally came with uh, a little exosuit guy and they've repacked it here. So it's never been sold on its own. So I don't really know what size it's meant to be. What price point is it? I don't know, box set version. But yeah, you gotta say that's a Wonderful little box set. Just a little Optimus Prime battle convoy setup and a whole ass Bumblebee who's kind of Bumble Jumper. <laughs> I'm struggling to find things not to love here. This really captures the spirit of like early Transformers, doesn't it? Very mechanical little mini bot man and an Optimus Prime with all the trimmings. Plus roller, love that. Lot of Transformers y joy in this little set and I cannot not love it. But yeah, this guy originally came with a tiny little Spike Witwicky in exosuit thing, didn't it? And uh, if I can bring that back to my PulseCon anecdotes, I did actually mention to uh, the team that the selfie series, we love it, but like I, as a Transformers fan, there's something missing there because there's no sort of Transformers application in the selfie series thing. So I'm like, why not an exosuit? Well, I I'm sure I'm not the first person to have that idea, but I had to mention it while I was there. I, I don't even think it would need to transform. Like a deluxe class, or maybe probably a Voyager, just to keep it in scale with the other selfie series things. Like a Voyager class exosuit body with the bubble on it, but it's got your head in the middle. Could be a goer, I don't know. Free ideas. Anyway. <laughs> give away, give away, give away. Yeah, yeah, no. All right then. <laughs> Oh yes, baby girl, this is a nice easy one. The only movie-verse thing out of this whole box. I was kind of hoping maybe there was a Nightbird or a Mirage going, but there wasn't. So I got a Bumblebee and uh, I've already got one. Woo. This is Rise of the Beasts, Studio Series 100 Deluxe Class Bumblebee. This is a great toy. I had a look at it in a previous Damn It Open and it's wonderful. Probably like the single best Deluxe Class Bumblebee in the Studio Series for me. I love it. But I've got one and I think you would enjoy it as well. So so, if you want to get in on this Bumblebee action moment, please do subscribe to me on this very website. And then drop us an email to a few giveaways at gmail.com bearing the subject line, Sting Like a Bee.
the worst line from the worst movie. I can't believe they brought him back after five movies with no voice. They finally gave him one and made him say that. Just go back to the radio talk, please. Sting like a bee in the subject and uh, don't call it a comeback in the body text. Yeah, let's go with that. That was a good moment. That got me back on board to thinking Bumblebee was cool. Sting like a bee, don't call it a comeback. Get that in by Sunday, November the 19th, uh, before midnight GMT. Worldwide, sure, and uh, one entry per person, please. And to all the best of luck. Right, moving on to another Bumblebee. Whee! I stand corrected, there was another movie verse toy in there, but it's also Bumblebee. This is a Studio Series 15, no. Studio Series non-numbered core class toy. I still find that odd, but it's the more traditional looking Dark of the Moon Bumblebee in his uh, iconic Bayverse Camaro vibe with uh, a backdrop that is a bit of Chicago. I can't see Chicago in films now without thinking of Dark of the Moon and that one bit of Age of Extinction. Was it the bear? Yeah, that's in Chicago, isn't it? I was watching that, I'm like, oh, that's the building where Sentinel Prime stood and had a chat with Megatron. Nobody cares, cousin! Oh, why not? Who doesn't love a bit of Bumblebee? He's fine. Chilling out with his uh, battle mask on the go and a very sort of black heavy deco. Lots of big hefty stripes there. You sound like a little Bumblebee. It's a different guy, isn't it? Everybody was so bloodthirsty in Dark of the Moon. But this is very much in the vein of the uh, Legends class toys from the time. Can't really see much of a difference. It's a little bit more involved, possibly. Yeah, the articulation's a bit better, but stylistically it's kind of exactly where we were 12 years ago. And why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Isn't that the point? Cheeky, uh, heavy blaster thing there, his big gun. I love that it's got that visible split there. Like, all the toys at the time sort of clamshelled open and uh, sort of glommed onto his hand, so they'd, they'd always crack in half. So we have, like, a pretend version of that. Amazing. Anyway, let's check out the car mode. They tend to be very good. I love the release order of this toy, because they did the pink laser beak version first, and then followed it up with actual Bumblebee. I kind of love that. It's so disrespectful, because you expect, like, a black Cyberfire version or, like, a grey nest stealth Night Strike Bumblebee moment, but, like, the pink laser beak, to do that at all, let alone first, incredible. And that, you know, not bad. Not a bad little movie verse Bumblebee. How many movie Bumblebee toys have we seen at this point? <laughs> but this is a not bad one. I love the uh, very macho sort of need for speed deco, very Fast and the Furious. This is the kind of toy that reminds you that the Bayverse films work well as car movies. Like that's not my world at all. The car side of things is always a bit lost on me. I kind of glaze over, I'm like, how much of this is CG? But you know, they do look good and we love a pocket sized budget Camaro. I'm really reaching for things to say about this, can you tell? It's just Bumblebee. Bags, moving on. Ah yes, this is more my speed. To the other end of the nerdiness spectrum, from the alpha jock energy of Dark of the Moon, we swing all the way to Beast Wars Second and Nemesis Leo Prime. Oh, baby girl, look at this nonsense. It's Beast Wars Second, right? Because Beast Wars Neo was big convoy, wasn't it? The mammoth guy. So this is Beast Wars Second. I always get that mixed up. It's all just lots of anime I haven't watched. <laughs> <laughs> Let me out of here, please. I am so sad. This has got pupils. I've only just opened my not Nemesis version of this, the, the standard Leo Prime. And it is a wonderful thing, but that lion is so weird. God, that feels good, actually. Wow, that looks so cool. Yes, the big black and charcoal vibes on this. This is actually really nice. Oh, God, it's got even more accessories. Let me just grab it. There he is. This is a uh, normal Leo Prime with his spooky haunted lion face. Oh, dear. What have you seen, my child? And it is very good, but it comes with these four very fiddly small gun things. Right, here we go. There's two of these and two of those. And Nemesis has two of these as well. So I've got six tiny little guns and one of uh, regular Leo's guns I've lost already. It's gone under the sofa and it's just vanished. That's the end of that. I'll never see that again. So the guns mount on top of a bit of the lion mane that pops out of his shoulder. So they go like that. And that's where those go. And these just kind of glom onto his arm. Like on the arm, he's got this little fleck of hair that pops out and there's a port on it. And then that goes on there. And uh, best of luck keeping track of that. And this version of the toy also has a handgun that comes in half. Good God, 
What a good looking toy that is. I love a Nemesis thing. You know, I try and play off Nemesis repaints like they're not cool anymore, but they are. The novelty of it has sort of worn off, but it's still good. The Optimus Prime head design is always gonna look cool to me. That's amazing, look at it. It's got his big cheeks and the head crest and the mouth plate and the piercing teal eyes. That's dynamite, are you kidding me? Love the um, pretend six pack as well, the robo physique, manly pecs. Does that open? Oh, it does, yeah. Cheeky matrix compartment there. I don't know if you can do anything with that. Is that the actual matrix? Does this go on here? Uh, mm, that doesn't quite work for a blast effect. It's just too small. So it looks like it does something, but I think it's just for show. I kind of hope it's just for show. <laughs> There's enough going on here. The transformation is really clever. Trust me on this one. It's really good. The way the tongue works is insanely clever. But I do have the alt mode just here. It's a lion. So this cat in that colors is going to look very nice. Like, I, I love that we have the head ready to go here. <laughs> and I enjoy that it does have eyes that don't look haunted. It weird that the evil version has the nice eyes. There's a lot of love for the beast formers on the go right now. So let's just have a quick scope of this very bright lion. Let's just crank this down a little bit. Can we? Yeah, there we are. There we are. Way better. God, he's really good looking, this toy. It's a little weird articulation wise. You can kind of make him pounce. The back legs are very free and available and you've got like double knees and sideways paw action on that. But then with the front, it's just me. Spooky sort of smooth lion vibe. It is a little bit unsettling, but the way the transformation works, like you can't even really tell because it's all so tidy afterwards, but there's so much going on in the chest area. I gotta recommend it. If by any chance you can check out either Leo Prime or Nemesis Leo Prime, it's an extremely good toy and it looks amazing in black. Love that. Do you reckon Beast Wars second Galvatron will ever happen in Legacy? Like Magmatron is such a move on its own, but I would love to see giant evil purple dragon penis tank. Man, can we do that? That'd be neat. Anyway, I'd love to show you some of the gear that I picked up of my own accord in America, like on purpose and everything. <laughs> so I met up with uh, my longtime internet pal Sophie, who is an absolute legend, and we hung out and drank beers and went toy shopping a little bit. This kind of took me to some of the known toy hotspots in and near Boston. We went to a little hobby shop to grab some Gundam supplies, which was uh, it shared a building with a gun store and a church. Maybe I have had the American experience. We hit a lovely spot called Toy Vault, which is in a big mall out in Massachusetts somewhere. Incredible selection of uh, Transformers and G.I. Joes and Star Trek toys and all kinds of crazy crap. And I was fortunate enough to grab a G1 Huffer. This was, uh, I think, the last mini bot I need to have the full set now from G1. There might be a couple I'm missing. I'm never gonna get Bumper. Forget him, he's not even on the list. But I managed to grab Huffer and I love him so very much. Just a little guy, isn't he? Little mechanic panic looking dude, love his face, his very robot-y face and his chrome claws. That is wonderful for me and reminds me so much of the Ladybird books with their unflinchingly toy accurate illustrations. Should we just uh, truck him up? <laughs> oh, so good. Very adorable. Tiny truck man, what could be more perfectly early Transformers? See what I mean about this Bumblebee? It's like the perfect modernized version of these very mechanically minded pocket money toys. Very blue collar attitude. It's all pumps and gears and bits and bobs. Grabbing Huffer was an absolute delight. I also, this was just as much of a treat and also an enormous surprise that I was able to grab a G1 Omnibot camshaft. Look at that. This was not one I expected expected to find. These are so rare in Europe and the UK because we just didn't get them. They were mailaways. This and uh, Downshift and Overdrive, was it? The red guy? They just don't exist outside of America. But I was in America and they were flipping everywhere. <laughs> Come on, you little rat bag. There he goes. Oh, so weird. So uncomfortable. Ah, so awkward. So scratty. But he is 30 years old. 40 years old now. Same. Such a wonderful thing to see in person. And, and like, it's so unusual because the front of the body is the middle of the car. Like it's not the top. The hood doesn't form the chest like Jazz and Prowl. The roof doesn't form the chest like Sunstreaker and Wheeljack. It's the middle of the car and the feet and hands come away from it. And it's just so weird. Oh, and it barely works. <laughs> Come on, dude, you're on TV. This was a very gratifying find and uh, weirdly disappointing experience. 
I mean, is it disappointing? I knew it would be awkward and jank and weird. So it's precisely what I expected. It's the bag of crap that I crave. <laughs> G1 camshaft and tougher, lovely stuff. And we went to a couple of shops. There was one in uh, Somerville as well, though I forget what it was called. Comikaze, that's the one. I grabbed a few mini spies. These are delightful. They're just little tiny pull back and go motor guys. Again, you never see these outside of America. They were $12.99 each, clearly. <laughs> Look at his terrible little face. Little robo mush. But these are fun, because I'm sure like Sixo or Maz could tell you more about these. But for me, they're just funny little pocket guys with motorized engines. The white one and the yellow one are like the same toy. I think they just had three molds and released them in a bunch of colors. So I've got a white and yellow one of that and a separate uh, GP blue guy with a, a more jazz-like head. But part of the fun of these is that you don't know if they're goodies or baddies, until you activate the rub sign and oh no, he's a villain, a deceptive bad man amongst us. And they don't have names, they're just mini spies. So you can kind of apply your own characterization to whoever these guys are and who they turn out to be. And I think that's delightful. See so yeah, a camshaft and huffer and a bunch of mini spies and I am one happy kiddo. And me and Soph just had a nice afternoon bowling between toy shops, went and had cheese steaks, checked out another place called uh, Newbury comics, which turned out it had an amazing vinyl section. The bloke had on a Year of the Knife shirt, complimented my Bosque hoodie. I grabbed uh, the first Vane album and uh, an Outcast record and some Wu-Tang for Charlie. Delighted. But while we're on Soph, uh, she also gave me an enormous, hideous, bright pink knockoff trans metal rat trap. God, look at this nightmare. <laughs> It's so awkward. I don't even really like Transmetal Rat Trap. <laughs> These wheels are so shiny and chrome. He's got an upside down arm. I don't know if there's a way to rectify that. I think it's just on backwards. And also uh, Beast Wars Transmetal Scarum, who is a big shiny dung beetle. Is it a dung beetle or a stag beetle? I don't know. Either way, it's huge and gross and shiny and I love it. Thank you, so. A couple of things left in the big Hasbro Boxo Delight. One of which is me. It's trash. Master! Hell yeah. Man, I love that they're sort of expanding the definition of what a junkie on can be. For years it's just been Retgar and repaints of Retgar and it's really boring. So I love that we've got um, Scrap Hook, Axle Grease, the trans one, Crash Bar and uh, Trash Master who is a gigantic garbage truck lad. I'll j let me just go over here for no reason. Oh, let me just open the box. Oh, I did it. Whoa. See how clean that was? <laughs> oh, we do love Love Trash Master, look at this big gnarly beast. This is such a peak goon design, isn't it? I, I love him, he's so good. Pop that off for a sec. This, this, I don't know if this thing really works. It's a, kind of a handheld melee monster bunny thing. I don't know, kind of like that one Mr. Bungle album. But the toy itself is wonderful. I hesitate to do a review on this because I really want to like cover everything. And it does combine, but you need two crash bars to make it work unless they like do a redeco. But he's wonderful on his own, honestly. This is the heavy. He's covered in spikes. He's all chonk. He's got a mohawk and shades and a big sort of bulkhead jaw. And these two little ear nubbins here, they're very junky on. And the colours are very junky on. So he maintains the aesthetic, but he also kind of works on his own. He's just a great big trash monster. And I love that. The feel of this thing is so good as well. He's so smooth and chunky. I've somehow managed to make him look at feet with <laughs> that leg move. As a junky on garbage truck, it, it does kind of echo animated Retgar, but kind of not really. It's sort of its own thing. Like, it's just a bit spikier and nastier than uh, anything that would fit in with the animated aesthetic. But, like, the groundwork is there, and I'm sure if they wanted to, the team could make this into a TFA Retgar, because animated is happening, kind of. The Optimus Prime looks really good. Uh, Bumblebee looks fun. People are saying it's too small. I kind of get it, but, again, Bumblebee should be small. We'll have to see how it feels in hand. Transformation's very sort of standard Voyager class large truck fella. Very inferno-y, very bulkhead-y. And I also quite enjoy the way this clomps on, like you bash in the two handhelds just right in, right back into his hands and then swoop it down. It's just tidally in there. That's really neat. And like in place of a normal loading trash area, you've got this huge maw. And then I start eating trash. Like there's so much to love here. It looks good in the first place. The windows are like heavily armored like a zombie survival mobile. But like it does all that and also, you can pull off the whole front wheel chunk and then glom scrap hooks bit in there instead for a different vibe. So good.
good, man. Yet again, should have done this one last month. But as you may have gleaned from my super smooth unboxing move, I've got a spare one. Do you want it? <laughs> Let's do this for the fourth time in like three days. Whee! Please do subscribe to the channel and email me at giveaways at gmail.com with the subject line trash man. And in the text, I want you to put they come every Thursday and they do a good job. Bang that in an email for me by November the 19th before midnight GMT. Once per person, please. Applicants are accepted from all over the world. Don't worry about it. And best of luck to you and yours. So yes, absolutely wonderful. Legacy Evolution, Voyager class, Trash Master, Born to Die, World is a f Right, one more thing to round us off for today. A big leader class luxury item. It is Transformers Legacy Evolution Toxitron. Hell yeah. Look at that. I love the box art for uh, Legacy laser prime, but seeing it in these disgusting ass colors. Oh God, it hits me nice. I can't wait to tuck into this. Let's just bang it open. Bang it open. Oh, before I log off to say, I simply have to mention it's a little bit away just yet, but in March, I am taking part as a guest at an all new toy convention. Can you believe it? It's called uh, Figure Collectors, collectors with a K and a Z at uh, Bolton Stadium Hotel on the 30th of March, pretty sure. I'm going to be taking part in a collector's panel representing Transformers fans <laughs> if you can believe it. <laughs> God, that's filthy. Woo! So uh, maybe pop along to that. I think it's a tenner to get in. I've not been to Bolton before. It's a big adventure for few. Come along and talk to us about toys and toy adjacent activities. There'll be plenty of other stuff to do. It's all very early days yet. It's still loads more to lock in, but I am going to be there. I think I'm the first thing they've announced. <laughs> But please do have a look at that if you fancy it. I'll pop the details uh, in the relevant spot if I can find them. Figure collectors with a K and a Z next March. Why not? That's how we do a repaint. <laughs> oh, I do so love this uh, G2 Toxitron cap fuel, you know? <laughs> Once again, the Laser Prime toy from Legacy is extraordinary. And Scourge also is great. Always a valid sort of black nemesis repaint. We always love that. But for me, I love that they asked the question, what if it was disgusting? <laughs> what if it was like toxic waste green and the trailer was all leaking crap? What's that colour and leaks out of a trailer? Nothing good. Nothing healthy. Jeez, this is a lovely toy. I can see why they keep reissuing it, honestly. Because what was it they announced for the uh, Legacy United leader first wave? It was Tiger Hawk, wasn't it? They incorporated the sculpting from actual Air Razor. Air Razor's wings, Tigertron's claws and that. And then also just Laser Prime again. <laughs> can we just appreciate how good that looks? With the bright snot green cab and the pure black and purple trailer. That's such a good shade of purple. Cadbury's whisper me, baby. God, I love this long nose truck design, man. It's so cool. Click that in a little bit. There we are. That's a little tidier. But like the character of Toxitron is kind of an unknown quantity for me. Was it like a, a collector's club thing? I don't really know where it came from. Never really been asked. And I don't know why. It's just because it's, uh, it's another repaint, you know? I don't know. Like the most exposure I've had to Toxitron is that my friend Scott has uh, the animated version. And that's it. I've seen his one and that's it. <laughs> oh God, this is clever. I love this toy. I've got three of it now and it still makes me very happy. It's still surprising how this transformation works. It explodes like from the truck into that. That gloms on. The arms come round and the head kind of scooches over. Lock up the back, spin him around, do the legs. God, I'm tired of these legs. <laughs> I think the thing I most appreciated about the VNR Optimus is that it had new legs. Because there's nothing wrong with these. Like, why reinvent the wheel? But he's had the same legs since Siege. Ooh, that uh, Transformers Reactivate Optimus looks good, doesn't it? That's a slightly refreshing take. It's just new enough to keep it interesting. It has the same kind of uh, smooth vibe as uh, Classics 06. I said that about VNR, but this one really does. Oh, mama, look at him. Those colors, good God. <laughs> the balls on this thing, the absolute fashion statement that is G2 Toxitron. Is he a baddie? He's gotta be a baddie. His name ends in Tron and begins with Toxie. Of course he's a baddie. Head is incredible. Absolutely popping with the uh, sickly green headband there. That makes a lot of difference. I really thought it was a different head for a second. <laughs> Check out the trailer real quick. It's a little bit underpowered for me is the trailer on this. It does do plenty, but it doesn't feel any good while it's doing it. It all feels a bit empty and rickety. There we go. Got the little uh, turret 
turret, little swivel turret there. Plenty of weapons storage on the go here, loads of ports. I think that's it. So it, it does do plenty. There's a lot on offer here, but like next to the sweet compact joy of that mini Optimus from earlier, and especially next to the original uh, G2 spring-loaded disc launcher thing, this does feel a little bit Oh, you know, a little bit, mm, is that it? But look, this is a decent amount of toy. The robot itself is unbelievable. It looks sick in vehicle mode. Toxitron is the bomb, the absolute sludge bomb. And I, for one, am all about it. I love disgusting Decepticons, we know this. So the fact that you can just go into like Smith's or something and buy leader class Toxitron, that is wild. Better than Scourge, more fun than Scourge, I'd say. More refreshing, tangier than Scourge. Uh. <laughs> this sword is so dumb, man. It, it's a sword with a shield in it. But you can pop the sword off and it's a separate thing. A little bit more practical. Nice sort of sidearm. And also, I think you can pop that off. Yep, that comes off. Slightly dweeby looking twin pistol. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> can we call that a gimmick? Kind of. So, you know, we got gimmicks, we got weapons, we got disgusting colours. It's G2. It's G2 all over. Cheeky earwax matrix there. Can we recognise how awesome all this sculpting is? God, the detail on this thing. Legitimately love this toy. Bam! Rocket pods. Boosh. Love it. Oh, Day of the Tentacle. Between this and that Grimlock, this has been a disgusting week. And that, I think, is the bottom of the box. We made it! Whoa. Huge thanks once again to all the PulseCon team for making the experience so wonderful and doing such a good job. I was and remain absolutely made up that I got the opportunity to do that. Love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. And I shall be back very soon, I reckon. We've broken the curse. We're off to a flyer. I feel like I've kind of figured out the setup here. This lighting feels way better. I'm in the mood. I'm in the zone. So uh, we're gonna do some robot videos because why wouldn't we, right? So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please do check out Rogue Limb and Figure Collectors and uh, Treebot Reviews. Let's give that guy some love. Don't forget to enter those giveaways that we're doing. Trash Master's great and uh, the other one, Bumblebee, is also alright. Please do take it easy and we'll party soon. Peace! Brand new bedroom shout out! Bagged it. We did the job. Cheers once again for watching everybody. Hope you have a wonderful week. Big love to all the patrons. Appreciate you so much. Especially Douglas Freeman Nichols! Look, you know why I picked your name. But I appreciate you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Peace. Be sure to subscribe for more Thews Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal. Keeping it real.